Yeah, we've got our VM10 free axis mill, conversational control. And the TMA tie? Yeah, TMA tie is our new lathe, two axis at the moment. Uh, conversational control again, eight inch chuck. A lot of manufacturers there tight on space. I mean, the VM10 is a, in footprint two by two meters. It fits in really well for the size of the workspace there. I mean, well. Now you've been running special promotions on this week. Can you tell me about them promotions and any future promotions that you've got in store? Well, for Southern Manufacturing, we've been selling these two machines at ex-demo prices. Uh, we're now in the, uh, getting ready for Mac. Uh, we're going to have about 11 machines there, and I'm sure there will be promotions yeah, around them. Serco TMM8i. It's excellent. Um, it's like having two spindles. Um, we can do the turning on it, the milling on it. We were actually looking to get a fourth axis for one of the mills. This saves that. It's another operation we don't have to do. The components come off finished, and it's so easy to program. It's, the Herco control is so easy. Yeah, have yeah. Um, we've had no issues at all. I mean, some of the components we've been running, uh, D2 tool steel, and it just cuts it like normal steel. In sensors. Route. Is this control here now on the lathes similar in performance and what you can actually do with it? Yeah, uh, the milling uh, option on the rotary is exactly the same as the mill um, for, the, for the turning side of things. So. If you can program the mill on rotary, you can program the lathe. It's so, so straightforward. Simple things that we always do on turning would be hexagons um, or flats. You can just define how many sides and what size the inner diameter is, and the machine takes care of it. You yeah, the, the main thing is the, um, the programming of the control. We're using something a lot closer to what we do on our milling machines. So um, if you know rotary programming on a mill, you'll recognize very quickly how this works. Yes, this is fully digital platform now. It's all digital drives and it is the latest Turco control. So it's what we call our version 11 software. Nearing Limited and I'm joined by Gavin. Now, Gavin, what were your considerations for buying Herco machines? Um, well initially, when we bought the first one, we, we looked around at lots of different machines. And when we come across Herco, we looked at the features for the machine itself and the control. And we just decided that it looked more what we were looking for at the time. So we, we bought the first one and we had the training, the supply training that come with the machine. The farming, general public, I mean, we do everything. We make parts for rock crushers, we make parts for farm sprayers, all sorts of stuff. And the material... Hard and soft materials? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and what about the volumes? Um, we can do batches of two or three or five. So parts from uh, made from plastics, aluminium, stainless steels, right through to nickel-based alloys and tungsten, you name it, we can machine it. Fantastic, wow. Okay, so why Herco? Because this is not just, yeah. oh, just the one or two purchases. No. You've got a lot of Herco machines here. We've got 11 here at the moment, but our journey started back in 96 with the first purchase. So I guess you're not going to go with anyone else bar Herco. No. So what was your reason behind this particular purchase? This particular purchase was just the additional capacity uh, in Y and mainly in Z. Uh, customers were coming to us with uh, expanded product range and with the current uh, capacity we had, it wasn't quite big enough, uh, particularly in Z, in the height of the component, uh, which led us to purchase this machine. And Tavalon Group, what is it you're making here? Well, to be honest, what is it that we don't make? Um, we actually go from large to small components, anything from down to sort of 10 mil, right up to about 420 mil. Okay, so let's talk about parts and components. Yeah. Now, you've recently purchased off Herco yeah. a lathe and a milling machine. We'll That's cover correct, the milling yeah. machine in a moment. The lathe, right? Yeah. What was the reason behind this purchase? Um, the reason behind the purchase was due to the fact of uh, the actual footprint of the machine is relatively small. Um, but not only in that, it's because with the bar feeder and the capacity that the machine has with the 81mm um, spindle bore, and the, which has never been done as far as I'm aware on this side of things before, that they've never done on the TM10. Um, so in terms of our, what we needed for the capacity, in terms of the price point as well, which was actually relatively budget friendly for the specification and technicality of what we wanted like this don't you yes it's very easy to use um, the I am used to actually programming on the um, G code side of things um, and obviously making parts for example on there um, you have to do a lot of calculations and longhand typing of, of you know machining of the components 
Um, but on here, being as it's conversational and they are one of the leaders in the conversational side of things, it's very easy to use because you can just go on there, it asks you exactly what you want, you type in the figures and digits and tell it what you want and it will make it for you. So some of the best news I've heard for a long time, I'm at Herco uh, here in High Wycombe, and I'm with David Waghorn, the Managing Director. Uh, they are having an open house, and I believe this is probably one of the o only open houses that I'm seeing at the moment. Um, David, firstly, tell us the dates of the open house here in High Wycombe. Yeah, it's 20th, 21st, 22nd, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in okay. October. Yeah, And it is a real open house. You're inviting um, engineers and machinists to come along. Uh, why, why, why are you doing this? What's your thoughts behind it? Yeah, it's a proper open house. So we are inviting customers to come here and look at all the machines. It won't feel exactly the same as our normal open houses. There won't be the large groups milling around. Um, but, but we think we, we wanted to do an open house because we can. We have a lot of space here. We have a very well ventilated, um, nice, smart, clean um, demonstration area. And we can keep space between, between machines very well. We have machines ready um, with demos on that were prepared originally for Mac and are all ready to show now. And it's Ian, I'm very interested in the machine, which we'll talk about in a minute here from Herco. Sure. But what about this demonstration that, that's been done on the machine? How has all that been programmed? Because it looks like quite a, a sort of uh, a, a complex part. So I think the purpose of this demonstration was to show some of the different machining strategies that we can employ on the control itself. Um, helical ramp entry into the material with cutters as opposed to plunge cutting and uh, trachoidal machining so where you can go to full depth and just keep using the side of the cutter to clear away material as opposed to using the more conventional Z level sort of uh, machining to clear the metal away originally. David we've got the VM5 here this machine's available from stock you've got a few of them um, available for quick delivery can you talk us through the machine? Yeah this one in particular we're offering with free delivery um, it's been here for a year or more not done a lot um, I think it's only about 35 spindle hours um, but it's a nice good entry level machine. Good Cuts first well. machine isn't it what a first machine to have if you've got a small workshop you need you know the capacity to make parts but you don't want to fill your floor space up yeah we found this machine's very good um, certainly as a second art machine an apprentice training machine um, that that kind of thing straight for good three axis machine and it'll certainly do um, steel tool steel that kind of work it's, it's and a it proper fits machine. in in, in, in a, isn't that there's an there's an envelope or a size i can't remember one of your colleagues has told me before yes yeah, so so I'm at Herco in High Wycombe, I'm with John Farthing. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, one of the most popular selling five axis machines. John, why is this VMX so popular mm. in your opinion? Yeah, Paul, it, it is very, very popular. We sell several five axis machines. This is by far one of the most popular. I say by, by far, certainly the style of the machine, which it is, the, the axis movement which you get makes it a very versatile machine. So as a standard three axis machine, you're getting 1066 by 610 by 610 as a travel and then the swivel B axis then brings in the five axis, which gives you 610 diameter by about 410 high. So it's fair to say, Nick, tell me a little bit about this uh, VMX60 that we have behind you. All right, basically it's a big beast. Um, ideal for big plate work. Um, it's got a 12K spindle, um, with like some sort of quite good low end torque as well. I mean, is this all about power, size, and you know, uh, heavier parts, industrial components? Yeah, essentially, Herco do a range of machines in the VMX range, and they, they vary, in, vary in size. This one has got a one and a half meter travel in, in the uh, x-axis, so it just gives you greater capacity. What about your Y here? Do you have a big Y as well? Uh, 660. Okay, and there's quite a big Z, so you've got good clearance there as well. Yeah, the clearance nice. is ideal, especially um, so you've got a sort of 660 clearance in there. So if you want to put a fourth axis on there, you've got plenty of clearance, um, so you can virtually change it to uh, a fourth axis machine. Uh now, and we've been able to, we found we've been able to do customer demonstrations safely following all the government guidelines. And so we thought rather than trying to do everything online, it is quite nice to meet people face to face. And so long as we can follow all the guidelines that are as required, um, we think it'll be a good opportunity to have a proper event. So do you what, 
what's the um, what's the success been like though? It's been good. It's been um, it's not felt like a normal open house, and that's been the challenge. We've um, although it's been on three days because we wanted to keep the area relatively clear. We've spread it over five, and we've also done surprising number of remote demos as well. So we've kind of missed that open house buzz. But but I'd still say it's been a really successful, positive week. Would you say engineers have wanted to get out and about? Have they have they commented and said, you know? This is what we want. We want to come to showrooms. We want to see machines in action. We want to learn. Yeah, definitely. You can look at a brochure and pictures and drawings all day, but there's nothing like coming and looking at a machine. And, and